Welcome to the mini focus training on MMIS. This class will demonstrate one of the two tools that we use to look up clients insurance, MMIS. The second tool, PH Tech, will be shown in a separate video. The first screen I'm going to show you is the screen to log in. For the purpose of this class, we already assume that you have a login set up and there's some type of a saved web page or shortcut to get to the MMIS login screen. If you do not have access to MMIS, please email EHR support. On the login screen, you want to select first the providers option at the top here. Then you will click login after clicking on providers. This will bring up the home page for MMIS. You will pick the eligibility option. When you click on the eligibility option, it brings up the eligibility verification request screen. You must provide at least three pieces of information on this screen, either a client ID, last name, first name, birth date, or social security number, all in the left hand column. When you provide three pieces of information, you can then do a client search. The client ID on this screen is the Medicaid number or Prime number as it's called. Do not confuse this with our client ID and CDT. They are not the same. This would be the Medicaid number that we are looking for. You must also enter to and from on the dates of service. When you enter the dates of service, we typically recommend that unless you are looking for some sort of historical information, that you just use today's date for both the from and the to dates of service because you really only need to know if this client has insurance today. Since MMIS is HIPAA protected, I've created a fictitious client and created some screenshots that only show information for our fictitious client. In this case, I'm going to minimize the real MMIS and show our screenshots. I have provided the client ID as well as a first and last name and the dates of service for 9-7-2018. After you enter the client information, you would then press the search button. You will either get to the next screen I'm going to show now, which is the client information screen, or you will get an error message that will tell you either the client can't be found or the client is not eligible for the date range selected. Occasionally, you may be presented with more than one client ID that you must select from. This could happen if the client has changed their prime or a Medicaid number. This sometimes happens when people have been adopted and they get new numbers. You will just have to try one of the two numbers and see which number is the active one for the date range that you are looking for. On the client verification screen, you will see the client information and all of the insurance information that the state has for this client. The very first place we want to look is down near the bottom of the page and this is the managed care or primary care home. This is where the information for our CCO advanced health is shown provided they have a, uh, a advanced health insurance. In this case, we're showing this guy does have an advanced health insurance effective for the date range that I have selected. The next thing you will want to look at will be whether or not they have the Medicaid. If they do not have an advanced health, you'll be looking in this area here for the SMHS, the State Medicaid Mental Health Services line. If they have that, that would indicate they have what is known as Medicaid Open Card, also known as Fee for Service. If they have Advanced Health, they're eligible for all of our services. If they have the State Medicaid Mental Health Services, they're eligible for some of our services if they do not also have Advanced Health. Other items that need to be checked on this screen are the TPL, TPL is going to show you if they have any third-party insurance, like a private health insurance. 
If they do have private health insurance, they probably are not eligible for services at Coos Health and Wellness and would be referred out to a private health care provider. Also, another thing to look for on this section is whether or not the client has Medicare. You're looking up here in this area. If they show Medicare Part B, they may be eligible for some medication services with some of our providers. So when you look up the insurance for this person, we have found that this person has advanced health, so they are they have the insurance that we are looking for and so we can go ahead and provide the services. The advantages of using MMIS as a tool to look up the insurance are it shows these multiple types of insurance like the Medicaid and Medicare. It's also easy to search without knowing what the client's Medicaid or prime number is because you can just put in a birth date, the last name and first name to search for the client. Another advantage of MMIS it was it will allow you to search for a date range. So you can search for up to a year at a time and you can go back as far as you want in history to search for what insurance may have been eligible a year ago or more. But it will only go through today's date. So one of the disadvantages is you can't see any future information. You can only see through today's date with MMIS. You must provide the three pieces of information. You can't look up something with just the client ID number. And there's no client demographic information that you might see, for instance, in PH Tech. You get just the basic information about the client, their name and their birth date and their insurance number, and then what policies that they have. The MMIS site is run by the state of Oregon and is the official source for information on our CCOs and Medicaid. Since they are the official site, we must make our information match their information so we can submit our encounters. Frequent items that we find that do not match between our records and the state are spelling of names and birth dates. If you have additional questions about a client's eligibility, or if you find a discrepancy between our CDT system and MMIS, please email the Activity Support Team for further assistance. If you would like additional training on this or any other topic related to clinicians' desktop software, please contact the EHR Support Team. Thank you for viewing this video.